Dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Jesus continues to teach us using the parable, encouraging us to embrace a life of faithfulness. Let us remember that this parable can also be divided into two. From verse 1 to 10 is the parable of the wedding feast, and from verse 11 to 14 is the parable of the wedding garment. But most times we take these passages as one parable, the parable of the wedding feast. In this parable, Jesus reveals the nature of God to us that we may come to appreciate him more and more and be responsible as his children. That the king decided to prepare this wedding banquet or feast for the son shows us how the father loves the son. In the action of the king, we see that God is the initiator, God is the planner, God is the one who has invited everyone. Everyone is invited, both saints and sinners. Everyone is welcome in the heart of God. We are all invited not to a funeral ceremony, but we are invited to a wedding feast. Of course, when we attend wedding ceremonies, we eat and drink and we are happy. It's not a place to mourn. Let us remember that this parable of the wedding feast is a metaphorical representation of the Messianic banquet, which we find also in Isaiah chapter 25 from verse 6 to 10. In that passage, prophet Isaiah speaks about the universality of this wedding feast, that everyone is invited, all the nations are invited, irrespective of your color, your race, your language, your tradition, everyone is invited. Prophet Isaiah paints a very beautiful picture about how we are going to experience happiness in the context of this salvation, in the context of this wedding banquet that is going to be prepared by the Lord himself. You know, he talks about the finest wheat. He talks about the most delicious food. He goes further to explain the kind of happiness we are going to have by reminding us that during this banquet, during this feast, God himself is going to restore us to happiness. He's going to remove the cloud of unhappiness. He's going to remove the cloud of sorrow, the cloud of sickness, the cloud of misfortune, the cloud of calamities, the cloud of all kinds of negativities. The Lord is going to remove them and banish them and restore us to happiness. Talking about the happiness which everyone has been invited to embrace, Prophet Isaiah continues by reminding us that God is going to destroy death, which means that he's going to restore life to us, and he's going to turn our weeping, our tears into cheers, into happiness. He will take away our disgrace and restore grace to us. And this is also what we see in this parable that Jesus gives us today. You know, the extravagance of the grace of God, the extravagance of the patience of God, the extravagance of the generosity of God. Because God really wants to change our story. He wants to change our identity. He wants to change everything that has been threatening us. He wants to change every story that is ugly in our life because he has invited everyone to this state of happiness. You are invited to be happy. You have the choice. You have the decision. God has given each and every one of us the opportunity to be happy. In fact, he has offered us happiness. He has offered us joy. We have the freedom. We have the discretion either to be happy or not to be happy. Every one of us is free to choose either to attend the wedding feast or to abandon it. But the choice, whatever choice we make, has a consequence. Let us remember that those who refuse to attend this wedding feast, they receive punishment. But the beautiful thing about the love of God is that even in Psalm 89 verse 33, the Bible reminds us that even though we are unfaithful, God will continue to be faithful because God will never take back his love. He will never change his mind about his love for us. He will continue to love us unconditionally whether we accept his invitation or we refuse his invitation, but he will not force us. As we reflect on this passage, I want you to bear in mind the reality of replacement. God is not going to you know, change his love for us, but he will replace the beneficiaries. The entire humanity is represented in this story with the word guest. All of us are guests, but in this parable we see there are four types of guests. 
The first group refers to those who say, I want to go to the farm, I want to go to my business. They did not commit any sin. They did not kill anyone. They did not cheat anyone. Pero the problem is their scale of preference. Now, in every day we have what we call to-do list. At what point do we remember God? Is God the first in our to-do list? Or do we put God under? Has God become a secondary person in our life? Or does he still take the first place? Any moment we replace God in our life with any material things, we are also guilty of refusing to attend the wedding feast. We are also guilty of refusing to accept this invitation. Let us remember that material things can only give us pleasure. It cannot give us happiness. Only God is the one inviting us to a life of happiness. A life that, if we really accept it, a life of relationship with Him, there is nothing that can satisfy us as having a relationship with God. The second type of guests are those who kill the messengers, those who persecute the messengers. Of course, contextually, we remember that this refers to the prophets and those who were murdered, those who were killed because they were messengers of God. Even till today, there are persons who are also victims of this kind of violent persons. Even those who spread deadly, dangerous rumors, gossip, slander, all those who do those kind of things to destroy the reputations of the servants of God, of the missionaries, of the messengers of God, they are also included in the second group, in the second type of guests. The third type of guests are those who are good, those who are living saintly life, those who are living virtuous life, those who have made Jesus the center of their life. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, St. Paul reminds us of those who have put on Christ. You know, when Christ becomes the center of your life, your life becomes Christocentric. You think about love, you be patient, you be considerate. You know, everything, you live out the virtues of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it is so wonderful to belong to this type of guests. The fourth type of guest is represented by the man who entered the wedding feast without the proper garment. Let us bear in mind that the Jews have this tradition of keeping robes outside the gate, you know, for wedding feast, so that any person who enters changes, you know, puts on that wonderful and beautiful attire. But the problem is that this man intentionally entered the wedding hall, entered the feast without changing up. Let us bear in mind also that the garment we are talking about refers to the human spirit, refers to the human soul. It is possible to remain in the church as a nominal Christian, pero we are not really disciples. The church is made for the saints and the sinners. The church's door is always open to welcome the sinners. But whenever the sinner enters the church, it is expected that the sinner does not continue to be a sinner, but the sinner becomes a saint. So anyone who accepts Jesus must remove the old garment, the old garment of pride, and replace it with humility, the old garment of hatred, and replace it with garment of love, the old garment of unforgiveness, and replace it with forgiveness, the old garment of being not considerate, and replace it with the garment of being considerate. So we have to change our garment. You know the garment you're putting on. I know the garment I'm putting on. But the basic thing is that Jesus Jesus wants us to put on the garment of love. That is the garment that everyone has to wear. We must remove the garment of sin and put on the garment of holiness. We must remove the spirit of vices and put on the spirit of virtue. We must put on the garment of repentance. We must put on the garment of obedience. We must put on the garment of reverence to God. We must put on the garment of respect for life, respect for one another. We must put on the garment of patience. We must put on the garment of compassion. We must put on the garment of generosity. We must put on the garment of kindness. We must put on the garment of happiness. As we continue to reflect on this passage, let us continue to appreciate the love of God in our lives. And I want you to remember that you are blessed to bless.